Fake news. The responsibilities of higher education, students and staff. Fake news has been around for longer than the coronavirus, but it is taking a particularly dangerous form right now. In an era of anti-intellectualism, where evidence-based knowledge and scientists are set aside in favor of clickbait and celebrities, those in higher education need to step up and make a difference. Oh, but it's just a bit of fun. Fake news spreads disinformation that can actually stop valuable knowledge being taken seriously. It is also often motivated by subtly disguised xenophobia, racism, and sexism. Those who work and study in universities have a responsibility to challenge and curtail this dangerous phenomenon. It's my freedom of speech to post what I want to. It's true that the university needs to be a strong safeguard of society's freedom of speech. We should be willing to defend people's rights to express views we firmly disagree with. This also calls for us to challenge governments that use our fear of the virus to curtail the rights of individuals and organizations to criticize and challenge those in power. Government Gazette 43107 states that any person who publishes any statement through any medium, including social media, with the intention to deceive any other person about COVID-19 commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine or imprisonment for a period not exceeding six months, or both such a fine and imprisonment. The coronavirus fake news law needs to be monitored by those researchers working in fields such as human rights law to make sure that the state does not overreach its mandate. But we can note that it is quite circumscribed at present as it only pertains to intentional deception. Ignorantly spreading fake news cannot be punished. Ignorantly spreading fake news may not be against the law, but it is at odds with the culture of criticality that should be embodied in a university. The 1997 white paper on higher education made it clear that one role of the universities in the new democracy was to nurture a critical citizenry. We need to be that critical citizenry and slow the spread of virtual viruses. But why is fake news dangerous? We live in an information overloaded world. Posts get spread because they seem interesting rather than because they seem truthful. Posts with shock value or which reinforce prejudices spread like a virus across the continent. These posts escalate fear. They make governmental regulations harder to adhere to. They make the views of a few seem like the opinions and judgments of the majority. We have seen social media used on an international level to foment propaganda and hatred. Why do people make fake news? A great many fake news stories make money through selling advertising. Some people make fake news stories to stir fears and anxieties or to feel important. Fake news also allows individuals and organizations to push agendas of division and hatred. Okay, so that's why people make it. But why do people spread fake news? We live in an era where the views of celebrities outweigh the views of researchers. So it is hard for people to figure out what is fact and what is fiction. Most people pass along fake news stories because they are feeling anxious and scared. What is the responsibility of higher education students and staff? As a community, we need to take our critical skills and apply these to our online spaces. So how do we identify fake news? Practice intellectual distancing alongside social distancing. There's lots of practical steps you can take to pause and check if something is real before you retweet. Does the post seem exaggerated? Beware of clickbait. Who wrote the piece? Google some of the key names in the story. Who is being cited in the story? Google their names too. Where was it published? Does the story pop up elsewhere or is it only being carried by a dodgy outlet? Consider the language being used in the story. Does it seem aligned to the outlet? Do a reverse image search on Google to check the authenticity of any graphics. How old is the story? Lots of stories emerge every few years and are shared as if they are recent events. Use Snopes, Africa Check, and Hoaxlayer or other verification sites to check up on stories that seem odd. Whose interests are being served? Does the site seem to be pushing a very particular position? If the story comes to you from someone's best friends, sisters, uncles, colleague who used to work in the government, see if you can trace the validity down before rushing to forward it on WhatsApp. That seems like too much work. Better to just pass it along just in case it's true, right? No. Passing along stories without checking their validity is not only intellectually lazy, it makes you part of the problem. If you can't do some of the checking suggested above, just don't forward or retweet it. My friend keeps posting fake news. What can I do? 
Bear in mind that all of us can get caught by a fake news story, so go for kindness rather than points scoring. Perhaps private message them and ask them to take down the post and explain the dangers, while acknowledging it could happen to any of us. Or post a link below theirs explaining why it is fake news. Most people are unaware of the dangers of fake news and they make these errors out of ignorance rather than intention. I posted a story and now I see it's fake. What should I do? It is very easy to pass along fake news. Much of it hooks into our own fears and prejudices and some of it looks so sophisticated. It seems real. If you get caught like this, do not feel bad, but do immediately delete the tweet or Facebook status. If you feel strong enough to use this as an opportunity to educate others, put up a new post explaining how you were tricked and why it was important to delete the story. Center for Postgraduate Studies, because the journey is better together.